cockroach takes the same philosophy and just sort of expands on it, right? So yep. you've got that kind of tail hedge element to it, but then you've got other um, other sleeves or facets to the portfolio that are designed to do better in um, a variety of other types of environments. So yeah. I would love for you to sort of, are, anything sort of stand out either as lessons learned from running this in, in live trading or, or and or, um, you know, what, what has impacted the cockroach strategy um, notably over the past 12 months or so? Because it's been crawling along nicely. Exactly <laughs> nice work. N nice work there. Um, so, yeah, so just to reiterate that the idea with cockroach is like I almost said earlier, is like it's a total portfolio solution. Is like if we hold the world's asset classes in rebalance, hopefully we'll be okay. So it's global stocks, global bonds, our long volatility ensemble that we just talked about. We also run an ensemble of, of trend following. Um, I'm trying to pick my words carefully because I don't want to get mad, Adam mad about commodity trend following, et cetera. And then we also hold as like... At fiat hedges, we hold, hold gold and a little bit of cryptocurrency. Um, so have things surprised me or what have I learned over especially the last year? By the way, we just we only launched Cockroach in September of 21. Um, but it was just like the exactly things I was saying about it's like if you have a long, uh, protracted, slow drawdown like we've seen or what happened in 2008, those are the times you need trend following more than you need long volatility, right? You need long volatility in March 2020, but you need trend following in like 2022 or in 2008. Mm -hmm. So this is like, you know, putting that portfolio together. That's what we're thinking about. Um, I might be wrong about this. So you guys might have pushback. I know I actually went, Rodrigo is one of the first per people I actually ran this by is like in a risk on environment over long periods of time, there's only literally two asset classes. It's like equity and debt, right? Whether it's stocks, bonds, we can say PE or all these leveraged versions of like equity and debt is how we make money over long cycles. And then when those don't make money, they tend to crash pretty quickly. And so therefore we think about maybe long volatility offsets that equity risk. And then your, your trend following offsets that debt or credit risk with, with treasuries, you know, corporate bonds, whatever you want to call it. Um, and that's a way of looking at it. It's like, you really want to just ride that, that stock bond portfolio for most risk on cycles, but then to have those hedges for risk off. So then you repurchase that lower NAB points through rebalancing. Um, I may be oversimplifying or overly stretching a metaphor, but I'm curious, like, if you guys have any, like, pushback to that or, like, what I, way I think about it is, like, you have linear instruments with stocks and bonds, and then you have convex instruments with long volatility and trend following. And those kind of, they offset in unique ways where you'd think they would just zero each other out. But no, if you take linear instruments and you overlay those with convex instruments and they can jump out from behind the curtain and help you when you need them most, that's kind of the tend of the way we think about it. 